What is up, folks? Overlord here, back again with part two of my Pokemon Unite wishlist. If you haven't seen part one yet, we're gonna link it right here. Ooh, it's a nice looking video. Make sure to check it out before watching this part. Anyway, as you can see, I forgot to record this clip in the last recording session, hence my peanut shirt instead of the Master Chief shirt that I was wearing last time. But anyway, get ready for the Pokemon Unite wishlist. Here is part two. Next is another bug type. We have Scolipede. Scolipede has always been a really cool bug type to me. It's fast, hits pretty hard, and has a decent move pool. I think Scolipede would be a speedster in Pokemon Unite. For its moves, it could have Mega Horn. This would deal a lot of damage to opponents, but not have any secondary added effects. Scolipede could charge into the opponent, preventing them from escape. It could also have Pin Missile and function like my Cloister Icicle Spear idea earlier. The move could stack up to five uses with each having a 1 second cooldown between. Once all were used however, and to stack up more, it'd take about 6 or 7 seconds to build stacks. Scolipede could also have Poison Jab or Sludge Bomb, and Venishock. Poison Jab and Sludge Bomb would both have the same idea, deal some damage while poisoning the opponent. This is where Venishock comes in. It'll combo by making Poison Pokemon deal double damage from the move. This would function similar to Gengar's Sludge Bomb and Hex combo, without the 1 second cooldown in between. Venoshock would just do huge damage to opponents caught by it, but it couldn't be mashed. For the passive, Scolipede could have Swarm, Poison Point, or Speed Boost. Each one could work really well. Swarm could make Scolipede deal more damage and potentially have more movement speed while dropping to low HP, like how Greninja's Torrent works. Poison Point would poison opponents who would make contact with Scolipede while attacking it. This would work super well with Venoshock, as it'd be another way to get the insane damage bonus from the move. Lastly, Speed Boost could work the same way as my Sharpedo idea. Give the Pokemon a movement speed increase while at low HP, but in this case, if Swarm did that plus damage, that'd be a better option for Scolipede. If Swarm was just damage and Speed Boost was just speed, then it'd be trickier to decide which passive Scolipede should be given. Magnezone is the next Pokemon on this list. I've always liked Magnemite and Magneton, but then in Gen 4 we got Magnezone. A great upgrade to an already sick Pokemon. Some people don't like how Magneton is just three Magnemites, but I've always thought it was great. Magnezone would be an attacker with a high special attack stat. It's also a steel type, meaning it's pretty defensive too, making it a bulkier attacker than most. Magnezone's moves could consist of Thunderbolt, Thunder, Flash Cannon, and Metal Sound. Thunderbolt could be a single target attack, while Thunder could have an AoE, similar to how Pikachu already uses these moves. They both have a slow effect to mimic paralysis. Flash Cannon would be like my Heat Ran idea, dealing damage while lowering special defense of the target, but Metal Sound is a new option here. Despite being an attacker, Magnezone could support its team as well as itself with this move. It would also lower the opponent's special defense like Flash Cannon, but it lower even more since the move itself doesn't do you any damage. This debuff would last maybe 5 or 6 seconds, allowing Magnezone and its teammates that have special attack to deal massive damage to the afflicted Pokemon. Magnezone has multiple passive options, as do most Pokemon on this list, and here they are. Magnepole would be the hardest to translate, as it wouldn't do anything against non-steel type opponents. It can be changed to make it so that opponents are slowed well in Magnezone's range, like it's trying to pull them in. But then it'd be like Wobbuffet Shadow Tag with the movement speed debuff, so it'd be tricky to differentiate. Better options for Magnezone would be Analytic or Sturdy. Sturdy can work like Crustles, where it ups the defense and special defense depending on remaining HP, and Analytic can work like all my other Analytic users. Once Magnezone takes a hit, its next attack will deal extra damage to its attacker. Dust Noir takes the next spot on my list. This tanky ghost type gets a defender role from me, though I can see the support set working for it too. I like using Dust Claws more in my Pokemon battles than Dust Noir due to its evil like tankiness, but Dust Noir's design has always been cooler to me and seeing it in Pokemon Unite would be excellent. Shadow Punch could be one of Dust Noir's moves. It could be a quick dash like Charizard's Fire Punch, allowing Dustwar to quickly cover ground when needed. It could also get Shadow Ball for dealing damage at a distance while lowering special defense. A unique but tricky move to balance would be Poltergeist. The move could attack Pokemon with their battle item, dealing damage and setting their battle item on cooldown if it was ready to use. Possibly have the cooldown be half the time of the normal cooldown, to not completely negate long cooldown items such as Eject Button. To balance it, Maybe the move won't work when the battle item is on cooldown in order to prevent it from being too broken and overpowered. Another idea I had later on for this move was that it would only work when the opponent's battle item isn't on cooldown, but wouldn't set the item on cooldown itself. 
Instead, if the opponent happened to use their battle item and set it on cooldown themselves, then Poltergeist would say no target, resulting in the move not being able to be used. Dustmar could have curse as well. It'd take away half of Dustmar's HP, but then deal a lot of passive damage to the targeted Pokemon. To stop taking curse damage, maybe the opponent would need to get a certain distance away from Dustmar or run into their own score goal to remove the curse. This could be an interesting gameplay mechanic as well. Dustmar's passives could be pressure or frisk. Frisk wouldn't be too helpful as players can already see opponent's battle items, or if it also displayed which three held items they had in their HP UI in the game. I think it'd be pretty neat. Then the Dustmar player would be able to inform their teammates of what items each Pokemon is running. The other option is pressure, which normally makes the attacker use 2 PP instead of 1. In this game, it would make their cooldown add an extra 3 seconds or so when using a special move on Dustmar. Both could be useful, but I personally prefer seeing which held items the opponents are using, though making moves go on longer cooldowns is a great help too. Another bug type coming in, we have Yan Mega. I've always liked this Pokemon design, as I think it looks quite neat. Too bad it's not in Sword and Shield, but I'm glad it's back from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. To me, Yan Mega would be a speedster character. Since Yanma needs Ancient Power to evolve into Yan Mega in the main games, that should be one of the moves in this game as well. Ancient Power would send rocks toward opponents while also raising Yen Mega's stats temporarily in the process. This would help with its poor defenses a little by adding to its survivability, while also enabling it to be even faster and deal more damage. It could also get U-Turn for a quick in and out option. Yen Mega could fly by opponents making a U-shape, returning itself back to its original side and avoiding too much danger. It could also get Bug Buzz as an AoE attack. Yen Mega flaps its wings, causing a ripple effect that damages all foes in its radius. It could be either one big hit, or rapid smaller hits to reward it for staying close to opponents. It could also get Air Slash or Wing Attack as a flying move. Air Slash would work like Cramorants, or give it new properties like a single move target oriented rather than spreading out further away from the opponents as it is. Wing Attack could be a simple dash move, dealing damage in the process. Yan Mega has a few different passive options, being Speed Boost, Tinted Lens, and Frisk. Speed boost has been mentioned already a few times, so we have the idea for that, with lower HP granting movement speed buff for allowing for escapes if needed. Tinted Lens wouldn't see much use, as there isn't any type advantage or disadvantage in this game. Maybe it could ignore defense buff moves and deal its regular amount of damage to that, or even ignore shields and just do direct damage, but there's a much better ability for that later on for a Pokemon I have coming up. Lastly is Frisk which would work like the previous Dustmar idea, showing each opponent's three held items by their HP when they're on screen. Possibly go for the Tinted Lens to mix up not having too many of the same passives between Pokemon, though the speed boost is always nice too. I think Frisk should remain on Dustmar since I feel it fits better on a defender than a speedster. Scary Pokemon incoming. Mimikyu is next on the list. There are a number of roles Mimikyu could fill, but I put it under support. Though primarily a ghost type, Mimikyu is my favorite fairy type, and I've enjoyed using it in my battles. Some moves Mimikyu might use in Pokemon Unite are Charm and Pain Split. Charm would debuff a specific target, lowering its attack stat for a short time. This would help a lot in teamfights where a powerful Pokemon like Cinderace or Greninja can quickly take down teammates. Pain Split could function pretty much the same to the main game. Mimikyu would even out the HP between itself and the target Pokemon. It would also be a good way to quickly chunk HP off objectives if time is of the essence. You could also get Phantom Force, allowing for some unique plays. Mimikyu would turn invisible, allowing it to move freely undetected, and then pressing the button again would strike dealing damage. There would be a time limit for pressing the button again to reappear, where not pressing in time would just make Mimikyu show up again without dealing damage. This would be helpful for a sneak attack, a flank, or even just sneaking up to a goal. Draining Kiss could be another one of Mimikyu's moves. This move would drain some HP from opponents and heal Mimikyu in the process. This would help with Mimikyu's survivability and allow it to keep supporting its team. Mimikyu's passive would be Disguise. It could work by making the first hit that Mimikyu takes deal no damage just like the main games. I think they could ignore the nerf where Mimikyu uses 10% of its HP, as a small auto may not even do that much, making Mimikyu take more damage than it would have. The Disguise would break after that, and Mimikyu could be damaged like normal. The Disguise would come back if Mimikyu was KO'd and respond. Maybe it could also come back after returning to base, but that needs some testing to know for sure. Next, we have the brutal Pokemon itself, Hydreigon. It's one of my favorite dragon types alongside Dracovish and Garchomp. 
I would put Hydreigon as an all-rounder role. It's more tanky than your average attacker, while still being able to deal huge damage. Hydreigon has a lot of different moves it can learn, so let's take a look at some possible ideas. One option for massive damage would be to have Draco Meteor. This move would be an AoE striking everything in range, but would lower Hydreigon's special attack after use for a short while. This would be good to use to finish off a fight rather than start one. Hydreigon could get Outrage, causing it to flail around, damaging anything in its path. It could enter a short 1 second stun after the move ends to mimic the confusion the move would normally grant. This is similar to my Dracovish Outrage idea. Nasty Plot is another option for Hydreigon. This would raise Hydreigon's special attack, allowing moves like Draco Meteor to do devastating damage to opponents. It could also help restore the debuff from Draco Meteor without having to wait out the time. Dark Pulse could be another move that Hydreigon uses. It would throw out a pulse all around Hydreigon, while damaging and stunning any opponent hit by it. It'd be a nice no drawback move to help deal damage in any situation. Hydreigon's only option for passive is Levitate, but it wouldn't work the same as its main game counterpart, and would need tweaking. After thinking for quite a while, I came up with an idea I think would make the most sense, though very situational. Levitate could ignore the opponent's slow zones behind their goals. This would allow Hydreigon to steal citrus berries from enemies easier than other characters, as well as having another way to escape if it was being pushed back towards the opponent's goal. It could be an interesting way to see how that would work. Another Generation 4 new evolution, we've got Gliscor. This is once again a tanky Pokemon, walling off attackers while dealing damage in return. This gives Gliscor the defender role. I really like this Pokemon, and I'm happy to see it back in Diamond and Pearl remakes. It was quite missed in Sword and Shield to me. Glassword could have Earthquake as part of its arsenal. It would function like Garchomp's version, causing AoE damage to opponents in its path. It could also have Swords Dance to help increase damage output on opponents. This would be really helpful while outnumbered trying to defend a goal. Roost is another option that would be helpful to Glasscore, aiding in survivability. It would be able to quickly restore HP while continuing to fight rather than needing to find a barrier or return to base. Though probably not heal half HP as it may be too powerful. There need to be testing to find the right amount. Another damage dealing move Glasscore could have is Sky Uppercut. This move could knock opponents up into the air causing a stun for a few seconds. This would allow for the team to deal good damage while the opponents were unable to act making Glasscore a valuable team fight Pokemon. This would also help stall while defending a goal and waiting for backup. Glasscore's passive could consist of Hypercutter, Sand Veil, and Poison Heal. Hypercutter would make Glasscore immune to damage debuffs, allowing it to always fight back dealing regular or buff damage. Sand Veil doesn't see too much use here, unless Glasscore got a move like Sand Tomb, where it left a Sandstorm effect and standing in it gave opponents a higher chance to miss Glasscore. Lastly, we have Poison Heal. This would be a good counter to Sludge Bomb users like Venusaur and Gengar. Glyscore would heal instead of taking damage for the duration it's poisoned. This would be even better if Toxic Orb held item was introduced. Then Glyscore would be massive healing all the time when the Poison Timer went off. Here we have the original Bat Pokemon. It's Crobat. Crobat is another top favorite on my list, as the design really stands out to me. I'd make Crobat a speedster in Pokemon Unite. It's lightning fast speed make it a perfect speedster candidate to me. Possible Crobat moves include Cross Poison, Sludge Bomb, Brave Bird, and Hurricane. Most of these moves are already in the game, but they're Crobat's best moves of its types, and it could have other effects than other characters if needed to. Cross Poison would be the new move. It could attack opponents in front of Crobat while poisoning them and also giving a high crit chance. This would combo very nicely with Scope Lens. Sludge Bomb would be pretty similar to Gengar and Venusaur, by choosing where to fire the attack while poisoning and being an AoE move. Raybird can function similarly to Talon Flames being a dash where Crobat dives in for big damage while taking some recoil itself. Hurricane could act like Cramorants, causing a knockup and stun. I feel like the AoE is kinda small on it for being a Hurricane. Crobats could be a little bigger to capitalize on grouped enemies to hit them all in one attack. A difference that could be instead of landing back on the ground where they started, Opponents caught in this move fly in random directions once reaching the top of the hurricane. Depending on where they land could change the outcome of a team fight. Crobat's passives could either be Inner Focus or Infiltrator. Inner Focus could make Crobat not get stunned, for example, by Mr. Mime's Confusion hitting a Pokemon to a wall. Then it would also prevent its attack from being lower thanks to the new buffs it got against Intimidate in the main games. Now on to Infiltrate. Remember earlier during the Yen Mega section? This is where my shield idea comes into play. Infiltrator could ignore opponent's shields in Pokemon Unite, allowing Crobat to KO opponents through them and immediately start dealing damage. This would be super helpful, especially against something like Krustle, who may use its Unite move at really low HP, and then it's pretty much back to full HP and shields. Crobat would just need to hit it once or twice to get the KO, 
completely ignoring the shields. This would cause a lot of new interactions within the game. My last legendary on the list, we have Mewtwo. Number 150 is here to battle. Though Mewtwo would probably play similar to Gardevoir, it's one of my favorite Pokemon, I had to include it. Mewtwo is also a fan favorite, and one of, if not the most popular Pokemon not yet playable in Pokemon Unite. Mewtwo would be an attacker, due to its insane special attack stat in the games. Mewtwo needs its signature move, Psy Strike. It could be an AoE move, dealing huge damage to anything in the radius of the attack. Aura Spear is another move from Mewtwo. It could be fired in a line trajectory, passing through and damaging every opponent in its path. It'd be a fast moving projectile to help catch opponents trying to get away. Shadow Ball could also work from Mewtwo. It'd be similar to Gengar's Shadow Ball, dealing damage while also briefly lowering the opponent's special defense. To mix it up, Mewtwo could have a status move in the form of Calm Mind. This would temporarily raise Mewtwo's special attack and special defense, allowing it to take less damage from some attacks while also dealing more damage in return. Mewtwo's passive could be Pressure or Unnerve. Pressure would be similar to my Dustnoir concept, raising a special move on a Pressure Pokemon would give that move a bit of extra cooldown, but I think Unnerve would work really well in this game. Unnerve prevents opponents from using berries when that Pokemon is in battle. It could work where if the opponent is in a certain range from Mewtwo, they can't eat berries on the map. Early game, this would be really good since there are multiple berries on the map, but late game its effect wouldn't be noticed as the berries are usually all gone by then. It does always prevent opponents from stealing berries from Mewtwo's own tower while defending a goal. It'd also be really helpful in quick matches where there's always berries around. I think Unnerve would be a great passive ability. My favorite and only fighting type on this list, we have Scrafty. I think Scrafty would be an all-rounder in this game due to its pretty decent stats across the board, minus special attack and speed. It would do a good job at dealing damage and also at defending and taking hits. Scrafty could use Drain Punch to attack targets in its path by dashing forward with its fist. It would also regain HP from this, receiving more if more targets were hit. You could get High Jump Kick as another fighting move. Scrafty would jump up into the air, being invulnerable for a few seconds, and then come crashing down, dealing huge damage to anything hit by the attack. While in the air, Scrafty could choose where it wanted to land with the move within a certain distance from it, either utilizing it as a quick approach or retreat option. If Scrafty didn't hit anything though, it would take damage in return like how the move normally works, so retreat at your own risk. Scrafty could get Taunt for hindering opponents. It could function similar to the main games in the fact that enemies affected by Taunt couldn't use any status or non-damaging moves which means Blissey couldn't use Soft Boiled, for example. It could last maybe 5 seconds or so, which would be helpful in taking down healers or other Pokemon that rely on buffs and debuffs, rather than raw damage. It could also get Dragon Dance. Despite not being a dragon, Scrafty can learn this move. It would raise its attack and speed, just like it normally would in other Pokemon games. This would help Scrafty deal even more damage, and be quicker than when retreating or trying to reach a destination quicker. Scrafty's passives could be Shed Skin, Moxie, or Intimidate. Shedskin could make Scrafty get out of status conditions faster, such as being put to sleep by Wigglytuff Sing, or being poisoned by Gengar Sludge Bomb. Moxie would raise Scrafty's attack stat every time it got a KO by a certain amount. It could be made to stack up to 6 times, like the 6 stages in mainline Pokemon games, with each stack granting 30 or more attack points for example. This would help Scrafty build momentum on in big team fights, allowing it to take out multiple foes quickly once its KOs count start building. When Scrafty's KO'd though, the stacks would reset back to 0. Intimidate would work by making Pokemon within Scrafty's range have an attack debuff, having their stat to be lowered. This could either be temporary when first engaging Scrafty, or have it active any time an opponent is close by to Scrafty. I'm a fan of the Moxie idea though, as I think it'd be very fun to use. Finally, we've reached the final Pokemon on my list. Can you guess what type it is? Something that's appeared quite a bit on this list? It's a bug type. And that bug type is... Beedrill. Though I already have a poison bug type in Scolipede, Beedrill is too iconic to pass up. Another Pokemon missing in Sword and Shield that I really like. Beedrill could fit well as an attacker or speedster, but I think it'd work well as an attacker. Next, let's look into Beedrill's potential moves. Beedrill can get Felstinger, making an absolute monster if it's able to get a KO with it. For those unfamiliar with this uncommon move, when a Pokemon is knocked out by this move, the user's attack stat raises drastically, which is 3 stages. The trade-off is that it only has 50 base power. This move could deal an alright amount of damage in Pokemon Unite, but nothing crazy. However, if Beedrill can get a KO with it, the opponent better try to take it out immediately. This could be a temporary buff lasting for about 10 seconds or so, and if Beedrill manages to attack something within those 10 seconds, the timer resets to 10, rewarding Beedrill for staying on the offensive. This could apply for wild Pokemon too if it didn't make Beedrill too overwhelmingly powerful. It could also get Pin Missile or Twin Needle. Pin Missile will work like Scolipede where it can stack up to 5 times and be fired rapidly at opponents before slowly recharging again. 
Twin Needle is new, however. This could work by Meadrill firing two spikes at its opponents. Anyone hit by the spikes would get poisoned, and take damage over time until the poison went away. Meadrill could get toxic spikes, placing a big AoE on the ground similar to Crustle's Stealth Rock, but poisoning the opposing Pokemon instead. While in the circle, opponents will be continuously poisoned and take more damage than they would when they escape the toxic spikes. Even after they're out, they need to wait about 5 seconds for the poison effect to go away. This allows Beedrills to control space, making the opponent play around Beedrills area, which could set up for a potential bait from a teammate hidden in the tall grass. It could also have False Swipe as a move. This could work the same as in the main game, where it'll always leave the opponent on 1 HP. False Swipe could be a dash swipe, allowing more movement for Beedrill and letting it get closer to opponents. This would be helpful for a number of things, such as weakening wild Pokemon at 1 HP for a teammate to collect the XP, or dealing damage to other Pokemon when teammates getting the KO would be more valuable. The main thing it could do though, this combo with Felstinger. False Swipe ensures the target won't fall below 1 HP, which makes comboing with Felstinger exceptionally good. Beedrill could lower their HP, use False Swipe to ensure they don't get KO'd but get low as possible, then shoot off a Felstinger, receiving that huge damage buff. Just thinking about the potential really makes me want to play as Beedrill now. For Beedrill's passives, it could have Swarm or Sniper. Swarm would be like Scolipedes, run to a certain amount of HP. It would grant Beedrill a damage buff, as well as possibly a speed buff to help out even more. Sniper would up the damage of critical hits, making Beedrill even more menacing than it was before. Coupled with the scope lens, Beedrill could be doing insane amount of damage, making it a sure pick on any team. We've finally done it. We've gotten to the end of my wish list. That was quite a long one. I really enjoyed being able to share a lot of Pokemon I want to see in the game, plus coming up with fun movesets for them. Let me know in the comments if you like my list, and which Pokemon you'd like to see in Pokemon Unite. Hopefully with the game being so popular, we can continue getting new Pokemon all the time, so everyone can play as their favorite monsters. Remember to like the video as it really helps me out, and if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button for more Overlord content on the way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya, folks.